Pepe just said, on a funny day, we can go for hours like we haven't already. <laughs> yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. We can set the bark off a tree, fella. This is a preview. Oh. I have to edit this nonsense. You fit all in. You fit all in. Have you ever sneezed while racing? Sneezing's one thing. Farting. No, oh, man, I was doing a test in Navara and I had a paella for lunch. And... Did you pay you for lunch in a race day? But anyway, so the bad thing is, is it's so insulated, it just goes directly into your helmet. It's got nowhere else to go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Feeder Series podcast, your guide to keeping up to date on everything in the junior single-seater world. If you like to watch laps at a circuit that is far too tight and twisty for modern cars and enjoy drivers following each other without any real chances to overtake by lap two, well, we've got the episode for you. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and this week we're talking all things from F1's Jewel in the Crown, or as I think it should be, the Splinter in its Finger event, Monaco. F3 rejoined in support for the first time since its GP3 days and joining me today are two of the racers who tackled the Principality. Now first up let me introduce a guest who first joined us, get this, over 50 episodes ago and I know Pepe's watched every single episode since then, right Pepe, yeah yeah. And since then he's become a <laughs> he's become a race winner in Formula Regional Middle East and in Formula 3 and in the past week he can now say he's won at Monte Carlo. Has that settled in yet, Pepe Marti? Hello. Um, well, more or less. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for letting me join you guys again on the podcast. Um, but yeah, still a little bit. I, I, don't, I don't think I've really acknowledged yet that I that I'm, I've won Monaco. I think it's something that at the time felt so surreal and at the same time something that was not... Um, not expected that I, I i still haven't processed it i think let me tell you this and have a think you know no matter what happens in your career now in like 50 years you can just say to anybody yeah i want a monaco and it's it's true and we we know the sport isn't the biggest sport in the world that people aren't going to question it you're just like oh wow yeah this guy won a monaco so you've got that under the belt for forever but i'm going off topic and off script already because joining Pepe is a driver that he's getting to know very well in the Campos team. It's a driver who took third in British F3, barely left the podium in Euro Formula Open, and has already scored points in his full-time rookie season of Formula 3. Welcome to the podcast, Christian Mansell. How are you today? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. And as as Pepe said, thank you for having me on. Um yeah, I mean, this is my this is my first F1 feeder series podcast, so I'm very. Uh, oh, it's not F1. You can't say that now. We'll get in trouble. Just feeder series. Just feeder series. It's my first podcast with you guys, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, me and Pepe uh, are here, and that's usually a pretty fun duo at all times. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see where this goes, and. Yeah, got a few questions apparently, so should be should be very fun. Be just very... a few, just a few. You're hinting at what's to come. Um, yeah, and cool. yeah, you've said you and Pepe on together, and already in the pre-show, I'm seeing how much of a entertaining mix I'll call it that is, and quite wait to see how you guys tackle some of the questions. Now, rejoining the podcast with me is the feeder series F2 editor because you know. Formula 2 also needs a little bit of love. And you all know his name. And with his fancy microphone in 2023, you all love his voice. How is Tyler Foster doing today? Yeah, not bad. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be joined by a fresh Monaco race winner. And, uh, well, let's just say a new star in the making, Christian Mansell. Uh, but but in, all, in all seriousness, Monaco gets slagged off a lot. I think Monaco was really good this weekend. So mm. I'm actually in quite a good mood. Um I think I enjoyed all the races. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to to chatting and getting these questions fired up because uh, Pepe's already looking a bit bit scared. I'm just happy, mate. I'm more. I'm, I'm just more scared for like the the awkward questions that you guys have absolutely picked out just to throw in just a little bit of fire to the fuel. Yeah, well, we're gonna get to that in a little bit because uh, as these guys are alluding to, we asked for questions and. 
Pepe and Christian were kind enough to share to their social feeds, and it's resulted in the most amount of questions. I know I say it in a lot of podcasts, but this is legit the most amount of questions we've ever had. It's <laughs> There was a lot. <laughs> there were a lot. There were a lot. <laughs> Uh, but before we get there, before we get started, if you enjoy the podcast, please like, comment and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We'll leave a rating or review if you're listening on Spotify or another podcast platform. And if you happen to be listening on Spotify or watching on YouTube, you can take part in our podcast polls. Last time we asked where you'd like F2 and F3 in a perfect world to race at now. Now they're not racing at Imola this year or likely not racing at Imola. I don't think it's confirmed yet. Now, Pepe... Christian, I gave the circuits of, this is a perfect world, I know it's not going to happen, Montreal, Suzuka, Circuit of the Americas, and Interlagos. Suzuka. Okay, well, Suzuka. Yeah. No, yeah, no hesitation. Suzuka. No hesitation, Suzuka. Well, or, you're both or wrong. Interlagos. Or Interlagos. That's but... more like it. That's more like it. Because Suzuka. I said that Interlagos was the correct choice. And it seems that the Brazilian circuit is popular with our views and listeners because 52% of YouTube watchers and 50% of Spotify listeners chose into Lagos too, which is Pepe, unfortunately, the right answer. So um it's Suzuka. How much does Suzuka get? Suzuka Suzuka's the only answer me. Yeah. Suzuka got twenty six percent on YouTube and it got twenty percent. See it's a Brazilian it's a Brazilian fan base ruining polls again. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, thank God you didn't put Termas de Riondo like Argentina because I think you would have got fired up. Oh, <laughs> really? You would have got fired up, mate. Well, mate, apart from honestly. apart from offending a nation, Tyler, um, let's go on to this week's question because with F2 and F3 both racing in Monte Carlo, I want to know if you think these championships racing around Monaco is a good thing or not, or maybe they should be racing uh, into Lago, Suzuka. Um, so you can check out our YouTube channel or scroll down on Spotify to cast your vote. And I'll read the results out in the next episode. And while you're there, if you haven't already rated or subscribed, please take the 10 seconds to do so. It really does help us out. Only one place to start then, F3. And a Monaco winner's trophy is now in your possession, Pepe. And from what I recall watching, there weren't a lot of overtakes this weekend but you did gain some places on Sunday too how do you reflect on the weekend um well obviously for my first time ever in Monaco and uh funny thing is like most of the rookies in the championship actually have experience at Monaco and I don't so it, it's actually quite funny because I am um, obviously people just look at the results and see oh rookie oh, that first season or blah 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 thing is it's my third year in race cars and the rookies most of them are the fourth or fifth season in formulas so, so it's a little bit of um controversial you could say um stuff yeah you could say just controversial stuff but um but yeah i mean the weekend was good uh, obviously we started off with free practice in the wet which was um Quite scary at first. <laughs> Quite scary at first, to be fair. And uh, I think I think Christian and, and I both said the same thing after after free practice. Like I had to back off. Yeah. Because I was, I got too excited straight away. Like it was lap three. I think my engineer goes in the radio. And he goes, "You're P two, one tenth off." And I'm like, "This is too good. Like, why am I so fast?" Yeah, and I was just, were I was, fast in the rain. yeah, we were we were fast in the rain. It was funny because most of the guys were actually struggling. Like I was a second and a half quicker than an eventual podium guy in the feature race. Just well, you guys decide who it is. Um, but it was funny because I was behind him and I was like, "Wow, I'm, I'm way way quicker. What is going on?" And um, yeah, to back myself out from just not going too hard and uh, slowly made progress and quality was a little bit of a disaster because to be fair um obviously we it was the first time for everyone at the track but same thing drivers have a first time at monaco teams also have a first time at monaco and teams like for example ert prema trident um mp they all have previous experience in monaco with freca and Campos only has previous experience with an F with F2. And I think to be fair, that was a bigger disadvantage for us as um we struggled quite a lot in, in quality with balance. And we had to like just catch up, catch up, catch up during the weekend. And by then we actually had a really solid car. Like I'm I'm proud of the car we had at the end. But um I think in quality it kind of diminished our our performance, not having a, a dry quality a dry free practice session. 
and uh, yeah, that cost us a little bit. But then Saturday was good. Can't complain about Saturday. Uh, and Sunday, yeah, I was completely boxed in at the start thanks to a, a yeah a car in the hairpin, which um, whilst I was making overtake, eventually lost out of place. So not ideal. But um, yeah, then the race itself was decent, and uh, so yeah, quite happy with the weekend. <laughs> Imagine saying just quite happy with the weekend when you are a Monaco race with a bad. It's just, I, I, it's just you're a sprint race. race. I, come on, it's still a race. I get, race I get race ten race. points, mate. I've won two sprint races. You get the podium. It's not even that's, up to a freaking long race. Yeah, ten points. You won't even think about it in a few years. That podium stays with you for okay, life. Yeah, that is. That, yeah, that is true. That is true. Well, that is true. Christian, as tough tests go for a driver, Monaco looks like it's the biggest. And when I play the F1 games. Oh my God, do I start abusing the rewind button um, at Monaco. It's, it just looks and feels mental. I don't know how else to put it. Was it everything you expected? Uh, well, I mean, I went into the weekend with sort of no real sort of like, I say no expectations, but like no. You race real... poor mate and you had way too many expectations. Can we say that again? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, I I I went out on track and obviously as as Pepe said we were enjoying ourselves quite a lot. I was having I, we in practice I was pushing so hard and like having so many moments and I was like right okay chill. Um, but yeah, I mean it's never what you think it is to be honest because I've never been there so I I don't really have an idea of what it should have been or what it could have been. But uh, yeah, I mean as. I mean, me and Pepe, we have very, very similar comments over the entire course of the weekend. He just managed to get much more in tune in qualifying. And look, some say he got lucky, he got his lap in. But I mean, you need luck. You need a bit of luck on your side. I was on for a good lap and a good friend of ours, Sebastian Montoya, he flipped the wall so I couldn't finish my lap. But I mean... Jeez, coulda, woulda, shoulda. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be like, ah, I, I would be in Pepe's position if I finished my lap because you don't know that. So it's not even worth saying. But nevertheless, I think I'm proud. Yeah, I'm proud of where the car was by the end of the weekend. We sort of had an idea of where it needed to be. But the only tough thing that was sort of going into the weekend, we were told that, you know, the car was going to do one thing and it did another. So it was kind of hard to wrap our heads around that. But yeah, racing in Monaco as a whole is uh, just a different planet. And yeah, I mean, you struggle to pass in the race, but more or less it's about qualifying and we were on the back foot without, you know, not not like slagging off the team or anything because, you know, they did an amazing job to recover, but we just went the wrong direction in qualifying. But then again, I could have drove better. We all could have drove better. That's, that's you know, that's reality. Um but yeah, I think it's also important to remember what Pepe said when the uh, the the rookies have so much experience around. <laughs> you know, I, know, I know literally every single rookie that no, yeah, literally every single rookie in the top ten this weekend. Every single guy that was in the top ten, apart from Luke and Taylor, mm-hmm. had two years of or three at Monaco. So. No, no bitterness there, then, guys. No, is what no, I'm no, 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 I went with Minnie to the dinner gala and, and I, I know Gabri from a long time. I'm great friends with him. And the lap is insane. Like, uh, personally, if I had this car, I'm not sure if I could have had pole because mm. his lap is. Well, really I'll good. I'll so tell you something, Pepe, you I could say not segue any better to the next part of my script because I said, Gabrielle Mini won the race, Tyler. And I suggested in one of my many articles that I put <laughs> over the weekend that, in my opinion, his lap was even more impressive than Verstappen's to be on the same track as the other drivers and to have as much of a margin as he did over the rest of them. It was almost a second. Nine times faster it was. Is that too much of a compliment or? Uh, yeah. this, this is to Tyler guy. I mean, if you have your own opinions. So I was talking to Montoya, who's his teammate, right? And he was telling me, like, they looked at the data, obviously. And uh, it, like, I'll be honest, it made him look like a champ. All right. The lap as a whole made him look like absolute top dog. But Seb was faster in Casino. He was faster in Raskas. 
and I think Luke was faster in him than the hairpin. But if you look at it, Paul only did one lap or two laps, yeah. I think. And he caught the track at the peak, and he was literally the only one who had a clean session. And that is by no means taking away from what he did. He did a mega job, but... Yeah, he went nine tenths like, like faster in the last lap. Like, <laughs> like he nailed it. He... <laughs> Like he, he nailed it, but like he had a one tenth gap, but he went from one to one second. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a bit of luck and a bit of skill. I would say seventy percent skill, thirty percent luck. I think I think that would be fair. What do you well, that, that is all of motorsports, to be fair. But I do have to say, it looked like he was gonna get P two with the lap he had. I think, and then out of nowhere, he pulls that out, which absolutely floored me. Tyler, I know you're the F two editor, but your thoughts on well. Monaco mini's lap. Well, well what you what you what you said, which was his lap was more impressive than Verstappen's pole lap, which uh, certainly seemed to get Crofty going. Um, I <laughs> what, what honestly, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we won't talk about that. But uh, thing is, right, you look at like Verstappen's lap, and you think, oh, you know, it's Verstappen. You, I think you're sort of numb to that a bit, like you're mm. numb to someone who's just getting poles by a good margin. I mean, I know that, you know, Ferrari have been able to compete in qualifying and stuff, but when Verstappen does what he does, you kind of like, you expect it. With Mini, and I think Formula 3 in general, because you still get drivers like Mini who you think are like respectable talents of their generation. Like, you think he'll go on and do well. Respectable, okay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like one way to put it. I'll just... Uh... So... I think because because in F3 it's a lot harder to like um as Christian said get that all together in one lap and it does require things to go your way but that's the the whole whole point of like getting the credit in the first place is that when he got his opportunity he smashed it and mm. pe- there's other people who didn't and of course round Monaco if it one person doesn't and they put it in the wall then no one else does so it's like there's nothing you can do about that. It's just like, you've got to be ready for your moment in motorsport because a lot of the time you'll get screwed over. So wow. I thought you need to do a really good job with that. And and as we know around Monaco, as as Pepe found out, you know, once you're at the front, you're fine. Yeah, well, that's basically what happened to me. I was on for a lap and then the yellow flag. So that's just the way it's the way it goes. And to be honest, that's, that's not even Monaco. I mean, obviously Monaco is more renowned for it, but like as far as like F3, like, the, the traffic issues the yellow flag issues like you have some a- idiots put it in the wall in australia you know oh could be mate could be <laughs> too soon but the thing was is the thing no, was, no, mate, I, Pepe's, pepe like we say this like not many people know this but pepe's sector one and two like his sector two wasn't beaten until the third set of qualifying so he was on for like a proper proper lap but just my lap my lab with cult tires was valid if i'd finished it obviously i, I didn't Wait, I noticed. i'd finished it oh cheers me i also did my hand also <laughs> my wrist also did and he really hurt his <laughs> oh me i was done i was actually considering pulling out of the weekend i'm glad playing. you didn't you were the shining star mm. of australia what? no offense australian <laughs> i mean no but like the thing is I because I didn't take my hand off the wheel because I thought I was going to make it and I destroyed my wrist and I was actually considering pulling out. Wow. But well, he couldn't, he couldn't do he, he couldn't like do any wrist flexion like that. Yeah. Uh, weekend. Well, it gives uh, another good segue, Pepe, because on a wider note of everything, it's been well over a year since we heard from you on the podcast last time and 2022 seemed tough and you finally got the points in Monza how was the first season? And then on a better note, how's this season going and why has it changed so much? Well, I think last year um, I was the definition of a rookie with little tests and little experience, pretty much. Um, I, I think that's pretty much what it is because obviously, like I said before, there's rookies with three seasons experience and there's rookies with one season experience. And I was one of them. I was one of the one season, um, call it wonders, no? Because obviously there's this season, there's, I think, well, Nico's one, Solov. And he's also struggling. And mate, I, I, honestly, he's really good driver, but you can't expect to come here with few tests, few driving, one of the year experience in, in a car that is 10 to 12 seconds slower and expect to do well at your first go. And I'm not saying he won't do well at the end because he's good, but 
same way I struggled, unless you are, I don't know, something beyond, which I would struggle to comprehend, you're going to struggle. Because in the end, um, racing, like anything else, is repetition. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Pretty much. That's how it is. And if you do 50 days of tests before a season, you're going to struggle much less to put a lap together than someone who has three days of test and has put uh, one tenth or one twentieth of the amount of sets that you've done on your tires. Which, might I add, there are a few people who have tested when they, well, maybe shouldn't have or could have. <laughs> I'm, in I'm in not... motorsport, surely not. Come on, guys. This is well, absolutely I'm... insane I, as an I, allegation. I do say this, but I will definitely not be naming names. I, I Look, I know who they are. And look, I have a very simple rule in life. If you can, you can. Like, if, you, if you've got it to spend, if you've got the time, if you've got the resources, you know what? Do it. Because I would. Our but, parents would. Yeah, 100%. 100%. But, like, you know, it just kind of sucks when you're on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, this no. is turning into such a sad podcast. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, it's, it, oh, this can, is, this can, is why people tune in. We can in. tune it into a fun podcast. Don't you stress. We can change this vibe in about 30 seconds. But oh, the wow. thing that I think, though, is people listening and watching to the podcast, it's a known thing in the industry, you know, and the fans know it. And it is frustrating. It's refreshing as well to hear drivers talk openly about it as open as you can be because my well, god would you get in trouble if you started name dropping but it's you say, you say the fans know but like they they kind of don't, don't. The, the, they, the the best fans who listen to a podcast oh, like yeah, this yeah, yeah 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 but like the thing is is you look at some drivers who have performed really well and they're like oh my god they're rookies they're the next lewis hamilton like they've just come in with no experience they did like 40 days mm-hmm. in an f3 car but they're a rookie right yeah no well let's talk about someone else who has done a lot of days in not an free car but in euro formula car christian because the step up that you made from euro formula where i mentioned before a lot of pod, eh, not podcasts, a lot of podiums this pod got pod on the brain a lot of podiums how are you enjoying the step up i know it's not f3 in the same way but you went the route of Instead of going from the UK straight into FIA F3, you took that intermediary step. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I I think going from British motorsport straight into F3 is quite a big jump in itself. I mean, look, we've we've seen it happen before and it hasn't worked. So I opted that I, you know, I was in myself. I knew that you need to learn the tracks, European tracks, but like the experience that you get from Europe, like sorry, from UK racing is rain, racecraft, and pretty much just like sort of sense of where you can place a car because Alton Park, you've got to know where the lines are for track usage. Otherwise, it's not even worth showing up because if you don't use it all, then you'll be off by a tenth of a second and you'll be scratching your head going like, well, why? why like you know i've I've done anything i've done everything right my breaking points are on mark but you're this far from the white line and the guy who's put it on poles this far he's gonna carry that extra but i I think euro formula was really good season for me obviously it was uh it was a tough season but a good season we had i obviously had my biggest accident to date which was quite a large one um but you know even though all of the the controversies, the racing and all of that stuff. I I still think it was very, very good that I did that. Um, controversial opinion, but I wouldn't want to do Freca. It's just not really in my best interest and it wasn't in my best interest to do that. Um, but yeah, I love that car. And Pepe's driven that car once before. I won't say where and when, but um, he we it's just such an amazing car. Like it's, it's one of the best built, cars i've driven ever i i I enjoy it better than the fif3 car even though it's got more power it's got drs but there's no car in the world that you can do a half lift around stow and not feel your stomach shift to the other side and not get the same sense of enjoyment it's just an unreal machine i can't have you on tyler and not talk about f2 and the last time you were on we had fred vesti joining us He's now leading the championship. I mean, we probably just gave him the tips. I, I don't know, but maybe. 
well, I lead the champion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's going to happen after this, right? <laughs> absolute, <laughs> absolute. <laughs> <laughs> you have received to like qualify 14. Um, Mr. Reverse Grip Paul, not get a single point. We, we take in Bahrain and Melbourne. I've missed it by half a tenth. We take no Twice. responsibility. I missed it by 6,000 in Barcelona, year. guys. We take no responsibility. But Fred Austin, Reston, though, Austin, he... Austin, Austin should be a good round. I'm not even going to lie. Campus is strong. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But he's He's won in Monaco, um, Tyler. And my question to you is, is he going to be the champion by the end of the season? Well, I think at the beginning of the season, most people would have said that he wasn't the one of the like main favourites. I think people like Doohan, Porsche obviously was up there. I think Iwasa was actually on a lot of people's radars, which people got correct. Um, but Vesti's come out of nowhere. I think because Premo have had, to, uh, you know, last year with Hauger and Duravala didn't have a great season. Um, so they're sort of coming off the back of that. Behrman obviously stole the show. So I think that's sort of taken a lot of the limelight away from Vesti because obviously, you know, rookie, youngest driver on the grid, and then he does that. And it's like, even if Vesti leads the championship, people are still going to be talking about Behrman because of how young he is. Um, but I think he doesn't really care. He's not a the sort of driver who needs a lot of the spotlight. Um, he's put himself in a really good position. He's back at Prima where he absolutely loves it. He looks so comfortable compared to being Porsche's teammate last year. Although when I, I asked him about... Um, the prospects of fighting his teammate from last year for the title this year, he had this look in his eye, like, you know, like, oh, you know, yeah, I want to beat him, but actually I want to kill him. And <laughs> like, you've got to have that. Like, like the thing with Drogovic that people don't really take into account when you think about how good he he, he was last year and and why he got the, the role in F1 as the development driver was because of the fact that he has those unknown quantities as a driver that you can't really... You can't pin down in a, in a characteristic. You can't say, oh, he's good at this. It's just his general game. There's not many flaws. And Vesti, someone who, having that Mercedes role as well, that's going to give him massive amounts of confidence. And he's at the point now where, you know, he's won a feature race. He's won, um, he's got poles. He's won at Monaco. You now think the next thing you want is a title. So um, as long as he avoids staying out of the way of Porsche, who I think is claiming that he wants to be a bit more aggressive in the second half of the season. Um, then, go on, Christian, you got, you got a thought on Teo? More aggressive. thing is, right, okay, so here's the thing. Don't tell you, thank you. Here's the thing, here's the thing with, with Teo. So he made, the, he made that move on, on Behrman in Jeddah. Move. And, and, Everybody, Never everybody moved me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I mean, a you were meant to be moving the car behind, but yeah, yeah. A rather large thud. Dive, dive bomb <laughs> down the inside. Um, Daniel. Sorry, Tay, if you're watching this. I didn't yeah. mean that. Yeah, I don't mean any beef, but far out. that was, that was a hard one. Daniel Ricardo on steroids. Um, <laughs> so the thing was is that he he did tone it down off that. And the thing is, because nothing happened, people won't know about it. But in Baku, he was fighting for P2 in the feature race with Fittipaldi. And with all respect to Fittipaldi, he's a good driver, but he's not someone you want to be letting beat you in, in feature races for the podium spots, um, especially considering Porsche's pace in the first couple of rounds. So he played the defensive role after that and let Fittipaldi sort of take the move on him without too much of a fight. And then it was almost like his head swung the other way. And I think after Monaco, um, for the second time now finishing behind the winner, um, despite being one of the favourites, he's like, okay, now I need to be more nasty if I want to win the title. I have but to there's... say though, Tyler, my take on it was particularly from the Martins or Martins or how he bloody pronounced that yeah. surname at the start because he did squeeze him. He really did squeeze him. Well, the thing the thing is right is that you've got and this is a very ART thing and I did, I think I did actually say this in the in the preseason preview um, about what I thought of ART was that they're a very 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 capable team who just seemingly can't keep out of their own troubles mm. um, and they you know they seem really excited because they have two French drivers and a French team and you know, Victor's a champion and he's coming in with loads of confidence. But there's always this feeling of like the whole ART second curse, the second seat curse thing. And it's complete, you know, rubbish in the sense that obviously they don't favour one driver, but there's clearly something about the way they operate, which means that the second driver doesn't get the points that they should be getting, whether it's their own fault or whether it's a team issue. Because Martins has been probably top three in terms of pace all year long 
And yet he's got like less points than Duan, who has literally had the opposite issue. He's had no pace all season. So, you know, there's, a, there's loads of drivers that are ahead of Martins. And Who's that's 15 wrong. for the standings, which is... Yeah, he shouldn't be that far down. And um, no, seriously, if you want to look at his performances this year, he's been in, in the podium positions for like 50% of races. And yet he just doesn't finish them. He just can't finish races. Um, you know, he's he's literally got third, second... And then seventh and eighth are his only point scoring finishes this season. Well, let me, let me say this then. So it was interesting because I I said the same thing to my girlfriend when F2 was on on mm. Sunday. And I was like, Martins is right up there right now. Let's see how he doesn't end up on the podium. And then within about two minutes of that being yeah. said, he's got the time penalty. And there's one of the things I want to talk to the drivers in particular about. That was heart in mouth. Have you seen the onboard? from yeah yeah, yeah can we bit. first off before martin's is being really close to marshall before everything there's a safety car board mm -hmm. and there should be a red flag mm -hmm. there can't be two marshals on the side of the oncoming cars on track with a car that it's it's gonna be a red flag like the car is on fire in the middle of the track that should have been a red flag straight away and it's not a bad comment towards fia it's not nothing but I think that it was a really clear situation that red flag should have been thrown. And we had the same situation in F3. Out of T3, there was a car spun around in free practice. And when I mean spun around, I mean in the middle of the track. It was and, there was, and there was a single yellow. It wasn't even a double yellow. We had a single yellow going into a corner where there was a car stranded in the middle of the track. And we had a yellow flag for four minutes. Let me ask them. Let me ask it this way. Opinion, it's, it's crazy. It, it's a opinion. difficult track to see around. And I think... That's clear from well, everything's blind. Basically. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I, which I does, agree. which does, lend some credibility to your thoughts, Pepe. I'm not saying they're, they're wrong at all. I'm just being neutral. But is Victor's <laughs> problem that he couldn't see around the corner more than he was going too fast? I think people are being far too harsh on him. If yeah. I'm honest, I mean, I he's think... following a delta. Yeah, man. He's yeah. following a delta. Like he, he has to follow a delta for two laps. It's obligatory. And the delta is 60% of the speed. 60% of the speed in that corner is 110 kph. Minimum. If you if you see after the when he goes past and misses the marshal, he raises his hand in the same way, you know, as if you get sort of T-boned in an overtaking move, as if to be like, what the hell are you doing? Mm. And I think that was him like saying, I'm following what I'm supposed to be doing here. I've been caught at, and you know, we're talking about um, Mini getting pole in a good situation. That was a bad situation. As he came round, the marshal was just going round the car yeah. to obviously close the gap that he could then go through. Um, but yeah, I think Pepe's point is the perfect one to sort of finish this conversation. There should have been a red. Like you think about it, and it's you think um, you know, maybe I feel like the the FIA this year noticeably in all categories have been a lot slower, mm. have decided to bring the safety car out as a precautionary measure before then deciding, oh, yeah, there's carbon fibre all over the track. Let's red flag it. And mm. I feel like around Monaco, that really becomes clear. So I think, yeah, in, in the future, they yeah, need to I... be a bit better with that decision-making um, because, you know, especially around tracks like Monza where you've got gravel flying everywhere. You, if, you know, if it's a serious incident, you know, that's about as bad as it got without it actually being serious so a bit of a lucky thing, escape one more thing to add on to that i i personally feel as a driver if there was a car on fire you've got fuel you've got engine bays you've got gearbox diff oil you've got so many things that can sort of like, yeah no nice <laughs> things and mm, probably should have been a red yeah yeah well, should have. I mean, it was a red. They just threw it yeah. way too late. Way too late. I mean, it's yeah. like, in my opinion, mm. it's straight after the incident. How close was Maloney to hitting him? Oh, yeah. when cars are on fire. That should have been a red. Guy. Like, straight oh. away, the car is done. It's <clears throat> The car is done at that second. The car is done. You can't put a safety car, because I'm pretty sure the safety car is too wide for it to go through there. Or it was, it would have been too small of a gap for the extinguishers and marshals and all of that. Yeah, they would have had to go 20 kph whilst everybody's acting on the car. So um, it's not a critic. It's just say, let's improve for the next event. And I will call it in the briefing. 
<laughs> well, that's enough questions for me because the Feeder Series podcast is for you viewers and listeners. And we're going to move on to the hashtag AskFS part of the podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, you can get involved by using the hashtag AskFS on Twitter, joining our Discord and using the podcast questions channel. You can comment on our YouTube videos or you can keep an eye out on our Instagram posts and stories. And now I have said there are a lot of questions. And fortunately for me, my ride or die, Tyler Foster, has come with an indexing way of going through most of them, I think. I think we have to get rid of a bunch. But Tyler, mm. you have a plan for trying to get through as many as possible. Do you want to um, ask the question on how to get the question to Pepe? Okay, so we have questions for Pepe. This is the section where we ask questions that are directly to Pepe, and he gets to choose of the... I've narrowed it down to six questions. So he has to pick a number between one and six, and uh, we will ask the question that is numbered that way. So Pepe, pick a number between one and six, please. And my number is 23, so two plus three, five. Ooh. Question number five from Nate the Great at Drake the Great 26 on Twitter. More what is the most <laughs> what is the most important piece of advice that Alonso has ever given to you? Um, I think I wouldn't consider it a piece of advice, but it's just a way of thought that um, you always have to aim to be higher than where your material is. Um, so, for example, if your car is to be P6, you should be aiming for a top five. If your car is to be out of the points, you've got to do as hard as you can to get into the points. So um, I, I think that kind of mentality, which he's displayed over his career a multitude of times, like he's, I mean, he's, he's driven tractors up to championship fighting positions. So, um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, I think that was probably the, the biggest piece of advice. And are you going to be looking forward to driving tractors for championships or? Sorry? Are you going to be? What was that? I can't believe you missed that. <laughs> What's you say? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't think I need to say it. It's fine. We'll, 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 if, 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 uh, if it's left in, then you'll see it on the, on the replay. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, okay. question for question uh, for Christian. Uh, pick a number between one and six, please. I'll go four. Four. Okay. From Crispy Crab on Discord. Hey, Christian, do people think that you're the son of Nigel Mansell when you say that your surname is Mansell? Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot. A lot. I, I can confirm that. Because <laughs> I was the first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, how, did that, how did that come about? How did you find out that he wasn't actually? Did you have to ask him? uh no um so basically uh he googled you well um i pretty much put two and two together when i first started watching f1 and i was like who's this man from nigel Mansell? hang on wait dad are we like what's going on and he was like nah we're not trust me because he's a racing fan himself he's the reason why i'm in motorsport so he's checked and it's not come back so no but there was this one time where me and pepe were in Leonardo, and these french reporters came up to us and it was me montoya and pepe and obviously montoya with juan pablo um and obviously he's he's genuinely his son he's genuinely got the last name to boot and then they were like oh mansell mansell and i was like yeah yeah it's my granddad <laughs> granddad when you get on the when you get the podium or get in top three and have that interview, can you just say this is this is for Granddad Nige, Uncle Nige, Big get Nige. Um, Nige. But uh, yeah, no, I mean it. It was it was a funny it was a funny thing that I used to say to some people as a kid. But no, there there is there is no relation. Uh, I've like come close to meeting him like on one occasion at Goodwood, but I just missed him. Uh, but I, I would love to meet him one day and just kind of be like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to carry on the Mansell tradition uh, because, you know, I'm according to F3, I'm British, apparently. Um, yeah. Just, uh, continue <laughs> to get that wrong. But anyway... He's so, been asking know. for it for every single day. <laughs> on, on, his, on his wiki, it says, born in Australia, New South Wales. And then you flick down to the, the championship standings and it's not Christian Mansell, Union Jack next to his name, which is just like, wow. Rather annoying. 
yeah. I've actually asked, I'm not going to say what her name is, but I know one of the people who runs F3 like media and she does a lot of the Instagram stories for F3. I'm just like, make sure if you like record me, make sure it's the Aussie or the Australian. So mm. they make sure. And she was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And I was like, I'll slip you a 50. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question that isn't on there because I forgot to put it on? Okay. But interesting timing. Um, we may or may not be related. What is this? A question that came through. What's, what's he showing us? I'm still fucking British. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't oh. read it on that text. <laughs> <laughs> This is clearly not a one-time issue. Oh, man, I've been going at them since Bahrain, brother. Uh, do you think they'll change it before the end of the season? I reckon they won't. I think if they've, they've got this far, they'll... But for next year, I'm Australian. You should change. You should just start changing it to whatever you want. <laughs> just try, Just change it to, like, <laughs> and then... Oh, God, no. I couldn't think of anything oh. worse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, you're never going to race <laughs> in your life. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to keep that in me? I'm oh. not. For the sake of your career, I'm taking oh. that out. I'm taking that out. So, <laughs> Jim, are you going to be able to ask your question now? <laughs> um, oh, actually, actually, guys, I don't have that much time in house. I know this is what I was thinking. You said yeah. you said about twenty five past, right? Mm -hmm. The question, which was um, I forgot to put on here, but it is to both of you um, mm. from Hannah Profuk. Who is your favorite member of the F3 paddock? Christian, do you want to go first, considering you were alluding to people in the F3 paddock um, uh, in the 50s? Well, yeah, um, I like Seb. Um, I think the question is more F3 staff in the paddock. Rather F3 than... staff? Oh. I'll, I'll repeat again. The question's from Hannah Pruffock. Oh, yeah, no, her. <laughs> Hannah Pr oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Hannah, wow. Is that how it's you a... pronounce it? Is that how you pronounce it? Hannah Prydutch. That's, that's, that's Welsh, isn't it? It is. Oh, it is. Man. Yeah, she's Welsh. I think. Sorry, Hannah. I've been pronouncing your right name. How, how have you been pronouncing it's that? Forever. Prif Dutch. It's felt Prydutch, isn't it? Or something like that. But it's yeah. Hannah, Prydutch. 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 I'm good friends with Hannah. We're actually really good friends with Hannah. And that's the, that's the, per that's the girl who I've been saying, make sure I'm Australian. So, no. Like, um, but yeah, no, she's just thrown that in there. So I'm going to have to say it's uh, Alexis just to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. boy. I'd, I'd boy. say Malagita and my mechanic. Malagita. Yes, yeah. sir. Malagita. Mate, his uh, mechanic is the best mechanic in the world, yeah. mate. He makes custom, like in the car. Can you show him? Okay, I can show you what they did in Imola oh. season. So oh, we're gonna get through about four questions. No, 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 no. no. Fight, we'll fire them. We'll fire them off in a bit. Mate, mate, it is, it is, it is the so best one of the thing. data engineers got bored, right? And you can change anything that you want when you're a data engineer because you're smart as anything. So I go to switch on. But the apart from changing your flag. Yeah, mate. Honestly, and uh, apart from you know, <laughs> they can do a lot of things. So they were messing around on my steering wheel, and they're like, "Ah, oh, turn on the steering wheel. We've got a new setting for you." I turn it on and it's that. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's a... That's me... a picture of his face. <laughs> Photoshop onto like that. And that's, <laughs> that's what I turned on when I did my job. <laughs> Hopefully there's no like well, or anything that I shouldn't be showing on that steering wheel, but ah, who cares? <laughs> no, no, honestly, this guy is, is, he makes a custom one for every single place we go. Like for Monaco, he was the prince yeah. And the our set well your second mechanic Nagani who's who's a girl who's was the princess yeah so they photoshopped their faces and um, yeah, he's a legend mate he's a that. legend yeah. and that's that's worth at least half a tenth uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I know I know and it's got a little FIA sticker on it because the FIA have to come around and like make sure <laughs> inside the cockpit verify it like verified so they have to do that they have to yeah. do that. Uh uh tyler for the sake of uh not making all of our fans angry, oh man he's not gonna love this though but how what's the next what's the next the next ones are questions? questions for both of them actually questions that take it away uh, so, so here we go so this is a bit of a, a bit more of a serious one but we'll, we'll keep it with a short answer one so how about pepe can you pick up a number between one and five this time please three three okay from ells at jordan ells on i assume that's twitter um mm -hmm. How do you manage your time between practice for practicing for racing and school? 
Uh, really tough, actually. Um, well, you guys knew from the last time I was here that I was already struggling with school. And obviously, as as school goes, oh, Jesus, what was that? As school goes on, it gets worse. Like it gets more and more and worse and more. And you get more things to do and you get blah, blah, blah. And it gets harder. So this was my last year in school. And this was probably one of the most important years of my career. So I had two things who had, oh, geez, okay, that's stable. Two things which, which had more or less equal balance, yeah, in my future. You could say, well, actually, no, F3 has like a big, big, quite higher, but school is important. And I took a gamble at the beginning of the year to um, do it in one year. I had a choice of doing it in two years or one year. And I was like, I want to finish with my mates. I'm going to do it in one year. I'm going to wing it. If it goes well, it goes well. If it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. I wing it. Graduated. So that's good. I'm done. Okay. Okay. So this is of last week, right? As well. Literally Tuesday, graduate, go to Monaco in the evening. (laughs) Literally straight from the graduation, change out of the suit, give it to my dad. Dad goes home. We go to Monaco. And you get a trophy. That's a hell of a way to celebrate a graduation. That's the worst thing because when you win in Monaco, you have to go to the dinner on the Sunday. Oh, that's the worst thing, is it? You need a suit, mate. Yeah. And the suit was home. Man. There is no bigger first world problem than that. That is got to be. Oh, I, I won Monaco and I didn't have my suit with me. That oh, for God. Yeah, I'm not, you, you've one, no, no, there's no sympathy here, Pepe. No sympathy at all. Okay, but I had to buy those. <laughs> Yeah, go, go pull that it's trophy. It's not in the budget. It's not in the budget, mate. It's an extra budget. <laughs> I yeah, know this. This is for this is for other people um, as well. But yeah, in the interest of time, Pepe, that's a good answer already. Yeah, well, I didn't answer. The, I didn't really answer. The no, question. don't worry. We never do. Tyler, next no, question. Exactly. That's the point of the podcast. It's just to, it's just to get people's opinions and then not actually answer them. Um, so here are the questions that are silly. So we're going to just fire a few at the man you because to honest, they're quite short ones. So Christian. Between one and seven, please. Oh, lucky number seven. Hit me. Okay. Uh, from Katrin on Discord, who are your f- three favourite music artists at the moment? Um, I would say Weekend, Dom Dollar, and... Oh, there's a lot. Um... Like Bruno Mars was a heavy hitter for you. Actually, no, some house music. I don't know. It's house music. music. His name... Uh, let me look it up on. Okay, well, look how serious this is. Oh, for me, Drake. Um, hey, Drake as well. Drake. Did you forget his name? You had to, you had to Spotify. Drake. No, no, not Drake, but I saw that that was another one. Oh, okay. Movies, but I was going to have to scroll for a long time, so I just said Drake. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Pepe, what about you? Um, sorry, I've actually opened Spotify because I need to check for this. <laughs> but um, yeah, Flume is one. Mm. Cheers, Hugh, for the advice. Yeah, Flume is really good. I'm enjoying it. Um. Bad Bunny probably and uh, Eladio Carrion, which is um, reggaeton. Yeah, and honorary yeah. mention to Central Sea. Slowly getting into it. Yeah, Central Sea as well for me. I'd honorary, love to. I'd love to hear you sing a Central Sea song. That'd be. Oh, may we do it way too often in the, in yeah. the truck. Like we we. Uh, one Hannah, of our... Hannah probably has bad videos of us doing that. <laughs> we'll get in Doja. touch with Hannah. I'll get do in touch not. with Hannah to get this. No. We were singing Doja in the truck. <laughs> 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 Um, okay, uh, Pepe, between one and six, please. Uh, f- one. <laughs> okay, from, I mean, just letters. X Z Z S E L Sizzle on Instagram. Have you ever sneezed while racing? Like literally at 200 kilometers an hour and then someone just, you just get repetitive sneezing. More than once, unfortunately. <laughs> I've actually had, I, I'm, I'm really allergic to like dust. So like when we raced in Monza last year, it was terrible because it was september and it was like starting to get into autumn and that's the worst season for me and me it was bad like i'm going down the street just continuously trs open even like like no it was it was actually quite bad and in monaco i actually sneak like really this week i i um i got a cold at the end of the week and like i don't even know where from but I'm going through this casino in between the left and the right. I get the, the you know, when you want to sneeze mm-hmm. and you have to keep it in. I was like, wait, 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 do T4 and out of T4. When the bump comes on, I mm. sneeze really hard. If you sneeze when you went over the bump instead of uh, yeah. you know, skipping the bump, that would be ace. A bit, a bit <laughs> TMI, a bit TMI. When you have a cold and you sneeze in the car because I've. Oh, don't want to know. Sometimes it goes into the inside of the visor. 
Oh. And that's really hard to take off as well. Like you to, can't, to, I'm going to take... Visor open and oh, wait. But where do you drive? Actually, I've actually never asked you this. Where do you drive with the balaclava on? Here or here? Oh, I drive it like above my mustache. Okay, yeah, me too, me too, yeah. Because some guys drive the balaclava here and it's okay. honest, it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, like, like, first of all, the microphone and ends up... Yeah, and like, first of all, it's really uncomfortable because the microphone ends up wet, like wet, wet. And that's bad. And uh, second of all, it, that can happen. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question which wasn't there again? And sorry, everybody, you know, you want your questions and I always say time for not my questions. Sneezing's one thing. Farting. In the car. Oh, not really, actually. Oh, oh well, one of you has because I can see on <laughs> the face. Oh man! Oh. But, I mean, when you have a bad day, stomach back day. Oh man! I was doing a test in Navara and I had a payola for lunch, and that <laughs> was great. Too. Oh man! Did you get pay for lunch in a race day? No, it wasn't a race day. It was a test day. But, a test day, but you're in the car. But anyway, so the bad thing is, is it's so insulated, it just goes directly into your helmet. It's got nowhere else to go. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna say let's move on to a question that is probably the worst one you want to transition from here, and that is um, from Cameron Hawes on Discord. What's your favorite type of cheese? I Gouda. love cheese so oh, much. Parmesan. What I'm saying, Gouda, Parmesan, mate, every yeah. all the way. Parmesan, mozzarella. All the but, way, man. Like just to just to say, uh, no, nothing against Terp or Cher here, but um, as a Frenchman, he did actually tell us on the podcast last November that he didn't like cheese. Yeah, well, he's just weird. Uh, there's no other way to call it blue cheese i will accept strong mm -hmm. well, what about what about your favorite cheat meals Ooh. too many mate this is a question from racing for a girl via instagram i need to shout out too many. right okay my favorite cheat meal is there's a place in where i live in london called uh kokoro and it's uh basically it's Kokora media Sorry? I was thinking the same, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's spelt the exact same way. Um, and they do this sweet chili chicken with like a ton of rice, a ton of chicken, and it's crispy chicken. And oh my god, is that pretty cheap meal though? Chicken and Nando's rice? as well. Is that pretty cheap meal though? Chicken? Oh, mate, so many carbs. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no but like, okay, but the, the the rice is the carbs, but it's good. Yeah, but like. Chicken. I have oh, for you though, for you though, it's bad. Yeah, right. I have a Biscoff yeah, milkshake yeah, yeah. with it, brother. Like it's bad. Oh, okay. I've, I, you didn't, you didn't mention that in the end. No? Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of kept that out on about how it wasn't that bad. So I had to kind of add that on to what it was. And okay. also you know, with diabetes, it's like a a little bit of a strain, but it's so worth it. It's... Just, just, just because I can get another question is Samuel Graham by Discord said, "Hey, Christian, I'm curious what it's like racing as a diabetic." Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard. Uh, it definitely makes it more challenging. I have to unconsciously work harder than everyone else. Why are you laughing? What have I done? I laughed out. Oh, mate. No, no, you didn't say nothing. I just remembered when I when you had the alarm in the sim. Oh, man. I walk a... in. They walk in. This man's full focus because the alarm went off for the diabetes. And I'm like, okay, maybe he's just gone low. He's going low. He's going high, whatever. Because I've actually, I, I'm actually already quite, Pepe knows a lot. He's... I actually know a lot because I've been with him for so long and I know him since I was one of the first to know actually. You told me one of the uh -huh. first about the diabetes because he was so worried. And um it's funny because I I like it goes it goes the alarm off and I, I'm going in because obviously I need you need to face ID to see what the actual alarm is. And mate, I go and he's so focused, I touch his arm and he goes I'm driving in the sim and I'm like fully really jumps <laughs> really jump scares. He comes in and I've got the headphones on. I can't hear shit. And then he, he just taps me on the shoulder and it's it he didn't do it hard or anything. I was just like, oh shit. And that's where you farted in the car for the first time. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> no, like and the bad thing is oh, not the bad thing, but like on de on the Dexcom alarm, it like every single notification says critical notification. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like it looks really bad, but the funny thing <laughs> was, is it was just signal loss. So like <laughs> I was so annoyed. Uh, there's one. Right, let me just do final two. No time. You've done such a good job getting these all focused. We're going to not get through any of them. And no, Pepe, you're desperate for time. So I'm fine, mate. I'll just cancel what I have like next. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Go, 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 go. Continue, continue, continue. It goes back. So winning under the lights via Instagram. What were your first impressions of each other? Now, Pepe, you say you go way back. Uh, so Christian. First impressions of Pepe. Let's start with you. He 
one of the nicest and most genuine guys in the entire karting paddock slash car paddock because I met him in the karting paddock because I'm, I'm going to be really honest and call out a lot of people when I say this. Everyone in karting is a massive, massive, just not very, yeah, there's, there's not nice people. But in karting... I disagree with that. Sorry, I, uh, you can continue, but I disagree with that. Like he's he's giving of, you a compliment here, Pepe. Chill out. Yeah. No, 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 but I don't mean in a bad way, but like... I know, I know, I know. I, people i'm sorry for interrupting christian well the people that we ran into were all right but most of the people like outside of sort of like the otk sort of group and like one of the teams they're a british team and they're back in the day when a few of their drivers used to race for them there were there were just a bunch of just that they're assholes like with respect but in karting that works because you need to be feared in karting if i'm honest but in cars said in cars it does not work for you but I think my first impression of Pepe, because I I was fresh, it was my first ever race in cars right. like overseas, and I was so fresh, and I was a little poor, poor kid who had no idea what he was doing. Like I was helpless. And anyway, Pepe comes up to me and is like, "Oh, you okay? I'm I'm Pepe. How are you?" And he just like introduced himself, and I was I think my first impression of pepe was like holy shit this kid's tall he must be in seniors <laughs> um, can we all agree that i was the chubby fat kid back in the days he was the chubby he, nice fat kid was me he, he did have a few pounds on him back in the day <laughs> really like, he shredded down but my my first impression of pepe was just like huh i have a friend who's similar similar to me because i'll be honest back back in karting i was such a timid kid like i never really got my elbows out very much and, you know, when I did, it was way over the top. I would just crash people out and everyone would get really angry at me. But in in cars, I'm much more respected. I'm much more like, I, I almost feel like I, I, I belong more in carts. And Pepe almost made me feel like I belonged in karting, which was one of the things that I, you know, really enjoyed about having him as a mate. And there was such a long period of time where we didn't see each other because our car journeys were so different. And at such a, a a small world moment when we mm. when I text him and I was saying, Oi, guess what? I'm signing the contract for Campus next year. And he was like, get fucked, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was kind of like this moment. And then when I came into the factory to do it, and you know, he was there as well. We we were just ecstatic. Like, um, I mean, it was like the most wholesome moment that you could ever have. Like, yeah, you've got Carlos and Lando back in the McCarran days who were were like you know they were really good friends you've got lewis hamilton and rosberg when they were friends mm -hmm. but like i game respect game right i know that pepe is more experienced than me in f3 so if pepe outperforms me i'm cool with that but i'm always going to try and get close to him i'm always going to try and beat him when i put the helmet on and to be honest if if we ever got into a shunt we had a very very serious conversation with ourselves at the start of the year um, that if anything was to happen, we have 15 minutes of barking at each other and then we leave it alone and let the FIA deal with it because no, no, no incident, no shunt, no wins, no points, no podiums is worth more than the just almost eight years of friendship that we have. Can I can I put can I throw this to Pepe <laughs> for his first impressions? But I have to say now, Pepe, we've had probably in 62, three episodes, however, on now had the most wholesome answer to that is so good. That was so that wholesome was mate. i'm always crying but it was it's all true crying. and he knows that pepe yeah. um watch him call me the biggest dickhead ever <laughs> this Honestly. aussie prick turned up and i thought <laughs> i have to be nice to him <laughs> look i mean the thing is we both met each other at a really i mean just a starting point because obviously for him like he had some ex backing of experience from australia and all that but i think it all negates when you start in in, in european karting because everything is so oh, different you hit the reset button you, pretty much yeah and um mate i was fresh i had a year and a half worth of karting experience and i was in the european scene like i was nowhere and i was no one and i was slowly getting up there but um it was laconca wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah laconca uh and i remember because obviously for me Actually, that was my first final event in, in, in European karting, if I may add. But um, that was, I remember being, because I think we actually met in between the karting tents. I, th I remember the spot. It was 
from the karting test because the teams line up in front of the karting uh, track. It's really it's really fun. Like if you've never been to the karting weekend in Europe, I recommend it. It's incredibly fun to all the viewers, to all of, to both of you. Karting is the most fun and incredible racing you will get ever, and the Pretty most epic. fun to watch. It's, it's like epic. Three minutes of just pure chaos. Yeah. yeah, chaos. Yeah. Getting back to it. Um, so I remember we met there and Christian was the type of kid that you would meet on the first day of school, call it that way. It was like going to the first day of school. You know, when you go to the first day of school and kids are disoriented and they're like getting to know their environment, they're looking around, but sometimes you're shy and you're struggling to get out of the show and say hi and meet people. And I've, I'd actually had a really bad experience in my lifetime with being that kid and having a really bad experience with people bullying me and stuff like that. We and both. um, yeah, we, we actually both did. And because of that, I grew into a person that wanted to be liked by most people. And I still am that person. I like, I, 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 I aim to be friend, everyone uh, friends with pretty much everyone. And the thing was that I saw him being me a couple of years back and that was like the first moment that I was like, yeah, I'm going to give him a heads up. Like I, he needs, he needs someone to just say hi to him and give him some conversation. And um, to be fair, I'm saying this as if I thought that in the second, I was a 12 year old kid and I just went balls and say, hi, how are you? What's your name? But um, yeah, I think I viewed him as someone who, was me in the past you could call it that way and um it was really really me he's a f- great guy um i mean since the first moment you know that it was like a click it was because like back then we actually didn't even have you didn't have a phone i didn't have a phone mm. so we only saw each other at the racetracks and we actually lost contact for a long while and but i remembered christian from the race weekends we experience and you know we we yeah pretty much all the time we're sitting at the hospitality at the same table and um he's a great guy and obviously we've known each other for so long and i i i really really cherish the memories i have with him and i cherish the memories we create all the time and um i think he knows about me more than probably anyone Another segue to end the podcast because I think you two could pat each other on the back for another six hours. Wow, well, we definitely stop. could, mate. Yeah, okay. and we could also run at each other for about six hours more. Well, Christian says, fun part, which is Christian the fun says part. you know you everything. Part, Christian says you know everything about each other, and the funny via Discord wants to know what's your toothbrush color. But great question. It's a great question. So, what color is your toothbrush? But yeah, let's okay. twist it up. Do you know the other person's toothbrush? color i think i think you'll guess mine because it, it makes no sense but i used to have one which you well, maybe guess if, yeah, okay okay christian can you guess pepe's first it's either, it's definitely either blue or white 100 okay. yeah blue pepe? and i'd say yours is either red or green i got a new one recently so that doesn't you actually did oh. Oh. Oh, no. what is it White. What color was it? What color say, was it? You said white. You said white. It, 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 it was. It was one of the Colgate ones where it was white, but it had the red, um, like grip. So it was red. It was the color red. The, so the old one, we, we everything's fine. The Pepe Christian um, the thing, romance the is, for Christian is actually so difficult to call out his favorite color. Like I think, what, what was your favorite color again? Because you were telling me this. Recently. I mean, because it changes really often. This is, this is because, not true. Only because my design for helmets changes because I, yeah, man, it's a bit <laughs> like flips about. Uh, yeah. So last year in 2022, it was chrome blue. So I put my car in chrome blue. This year, it's just like light baby blue, but also orange and then um, off white. And then I think at the start of this year, it was potentially orange because of campus and i wanted to see what i could do but it was already too late so yeah that, the big, that, the big that, learning that i've got the big learning i've got is you don't care about your favorite color when you pick your toothbrush that's uh no 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 you gotta care no 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 well, where's, where, where's, where, where's the orange have, toothbrush you know toothbrushes there's a specific you know c- criteria that you have to meet if you've just got like like especially if you've got a black toothbrush 
No, nah, that's a red flag for me. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. Can't do no. that. Can't do that to yourself. And yellow. Yeah, yellow is and disgusting. yellow. Why would you get a yellow toothbrush? Like, oh it's no, 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 and, and yellow is actually one of my favorite colors. But like, yellow oh, no. as a toothbrush? No. Oh, that's no. Well, it's I like- don't. I don't know if we can descend to further depths than this with anger at toothbrushes. <laughs> I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it now because I have to edit this nonsense. So that is all the time. Just have keep it all in. Keep it all in. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you'd like to have your question asked on a future episode, use hashtag AskFS on Twitter. Drop any questions below if you're watching on YouTube. We can respond to our Instagram stories or posts. Let us know what questions you have on your on your mind on our Discord channel as well. Look for the Podcast Questions channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, dropping a like on the video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel all really helps us out. And subscribe to the inevitable Pepe Marty Christian Mansell podcast as well. We're going to support those guys. And if you are listening, leaving a review on the podcast platform you're listening on is greatly appreciated. Finally, check out feederseries.net for more feeder series insight and follow feeder underscore series fs americas and feeder series now on twitter you can find the links to all of those plus the twitter accounts for myself and everyone else on the podcast in the youtube description or podcast show notes until next time and i'm sure we're gonna have these guys on at some point in the future as well what a, what a comedy duo we have, a lot we have been the feeder series today, podcast. T- today we were on the wholesome side like, yeah if you get us in a if you get us in a funny day we can be on for hours oh man oh god <laughs> Like you need to book us at 7 a.m. because you have a full day. You need to book us at 7 a.m. because you better get ready. He just said, Pepe just said, on a funny day, we can go for hours like we haven't already. Yeah, you ain't seen nothing yet. We can set the bark off a tree, fella. This is a preview. Until next time, we've been the Feeding Series podcast. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>